gentlemen, welcome to Mind of a Psycho. This is, I think, the sixth edition. So, ah, fuck, chest pains. That's gonna suck. <sighs> Feel better now. Back to the point. Well, whatever better means. So, family. That's a weird topic for me. I don't think I answered that or came into it in any of my videos. And family is such a weird topic to me because essentially how I try to think about and how I try and probably will continue to uh, say to others is I'm more or less of a child of the world because I was born in Haiti, raised in America. And I say it like that because you'll see in a sec. I was born in Haiti, put in an orphanage, left with a net letter or something like that. Or maybe that was a short story. Either way. <laughs> I was left in an orphanage with no recollection of who my parents are. I was left in an orphanage with little recollection of who I was with and around. But I do remember there were, like I said, in one of my videos, either Caucasian kids or just because of I because of me remembering the uniform that they had to wear to school, I may have thought they were Caucasian kids. Like, the whole entire pigmentation just throws me off altogether. But for the fact that the island of Haiti is the Hispaniola island, which is connected to... Dominican Republic, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody knows where that is, but they don't know where Haiti is. I'm like, bitch, please. So when I tried to tell people I'm from Haiti, I'm like, do you know where the Dominican Republic is? And most times, like, yeah, the other side. Literally, the other side. Um, But family is a weird topic for me for the fact that I'm an orphan. Like, I've always thought, at least if I was like a stepchild to somebody, at least I could be like, hey, at least I know my mom. Or like, hey, at least I know my dad. Or hey, I know both of them, but like... They don't like each other, so like, mm. so for me, family is just a weird topic because I didn't have a strong family upbringing in my childhood. Like, we were told "I love you," but what does "I love you" mean when kids get hit? What does "I love you" mean when people get yelled at? What does "I love you" mean when your thoughts and opinions aren't listened to? What does "I love you" mean when nobody shows it? "I love you" is a very nice and strong word. It's a very powerful spell too, especially for those that listen and focus on words. I.e., me, which pissed me the fuck off, and which is why, as time has progressed, I have learned and desensitized myself to focusing on every fucking word that you say. But at the same time, I'm focusing on every fucking word that you say. Which, honestly, I am hypocritical in the way that I speak and act because sometimes I'll say I'm going to do something and not do it. But at the same time, I try to be better about it. At least I'm aware of it. And if people catch me on me being on some bullshit, I'm not going to backpedal. I'm going to be like, okay, yes, you are right. I did say that. But I have a scatterbrain, ladies and gentlemen, and I am aware of it. I am sorry that sometimes the things that I do say do not correlate with the things that I am doing. But at the same time, I'm not going to say and or do things that are very not the same like if I said I'm not gonna cheat on you and then here I am fucking six seven eight nine ten bitches all around while I'm dating you and like whoopsie but if I say I'm not going to eat something right now like let's say I'm not gonna have I'm not gonna say pizza because I just realized what the fuck pizza means that's disgusting what the fuck is wrong with y'all in society back to the point so if I said I'm not gonna eat a donut or I'm not gonna eat at all and that's a simpler lie like I'm not gonna eat at all then here I am munching on some fucking gummy bears gummy worms gummies because I gummy horror yeah you're right I did lie I'm on some bullshit I'm a little hypocritical then but the fuck i forgot i said that i started smoking some weed and i forgot the fact that i said i wasn't gonna eat and now i'm fucking high as shit and munchie starts kicking in so i'm like God damn what the fuck did i eat okay gummies yeah gummies yeah oh you said you, you're right i did say i wasn't gonna eat but um i forgot what you gonna do? Shoot me. I'm sorry, man. I, I ain't ever gonna lie to you about something important. I ain't ever gonna try to be hypocritical about that. If I say I ain't gonna fuck your chick, I don't give a fuck how much she got to fuck me. I don't give a fuck about your chick, man. I ain't trying to ruin our relationship over the fuck that she got pussy. If I want pussy, I'll pay for that motherfucker. If I want pussy, I'll go through the arbitrary bullshit of trying to get into somebody's head so I can get into somebody's bed because I ain't getting into her head. I know she doesn't really going to be herself. I know she's going to be front. I know she's going to be acting, but I got to be myself or at least less myself so I can get closer, to her, which isn't that manipulation. But I don't know. We ain't going to discuss that. We just talking about how my home life is. All right, man. So I'm going to go back to the camera and stop playing this part, okay? Thanks for the you know, keep me in check, bro. Thank you for being a real homie. So, like I said, home life ain't really shit to me. And family really ain't shit to me. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a goddamn orphan with middle child energy. And I'm still 
as every day progresses, learning more and more about what makes me who I am, what makes me tick, what makes my brain act like this, which some might say shit. Is that, yeah, popo in a whip, popo looking for something, popo in a shit. All right, so family was a weird thing for me because I had 12, 13, I don't know, there's just a lot of people. Like, I, every time I say that, I realize because I, believe it or not, pay attention to what the fuck I'm saying nine times out of ten, if not like eight times out of ten, if not seven times out of ten. But that number fluctuates so heavily when I tell you how many people are in the home because it literally depends on the year that you're questioning for the fact that when I was first adopted into the home, yeah, popos are looking for somebody. When I was first into the home, there was like a big old gathering. Like, hey, you got your day. You're welcome day, okay? After everybody leaves... We had X amount in the home, but as time has progressed, I've had foster siblings that we would hold on to for a little bit for medical things. And I've had some siblings that we were taking care of for medical things, but wanted to adopt. And then the lady loved the fucking shop. I shit you not. Like she would shop for houses. She would shop for people. If she wants it, she'll get it because her enabler of a husband gave her the world if he could. Like, I swear, I swear on my fucking life, even if we're financially stable throughout all of my life, I feel like we would have been broke for the fact that she wants, 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 she wants so much, we ain't got shit. She wants so much, we just sit and bitch. She wants so much, we can't even say nothing because she's the elder one. We're the underlings. We can't speak. Respect your elders even though your elders don't respect you. Woo-hoo-hoo. You know who's more objectified? Uh, you know who's more objectified than women in life? Kids. Kids are not seen as humans. Kids are meant to... Be- Wait, no, 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 no. This is a quote that I've heard from an adult. Kids are meant to be seen, not heard. I hope your ass get put in all folks' home. Take it from somebody that's worked with the elderly. That's probably one of the worst places you could put your fucking parents, grandparents, anybody that you generally give a shit about. Unless you have the money to fork out a very fucking... If you have enough money to fork out for a very, 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 very good... All folks home, I would suggest either they live with you, you pay for in-home care, and you visit constantly because for somebody that works in the industry, giving you a d- damn tip ain't worth it. Ain't worth that shit. Your grandparents aren't probably being taken care of because as one of the small few that generally give a shit about human existence, as one of the small few that generally give a shit about others, if I can, because there's some people that's just... You could care for them, but they're just so careless. It hurts you to watch them do the things that they do. And they're going to continue, too, because they're just like, this is life I love. This is what I do. I just got to do, do, my do, do all the damn time, even though it's shit half the times. And it hurts you. Well, it hurts me personally. Like, I'm that type of feeler. I, it hurts me to see people in bad positions. But at the same time, I've tried to get people out of bad positions. And it's just like, I can't stop you from hurting yourself. I can't stop you from being your own villain. I can't stop you. I can't be your hero. But growing up, I always thought I could be somebody's hero. Just to neglect the fact that I need a hero. Just to neglect the fact that I can be my own hero. To just neglect the fact of who the fuck I am focusing on other people. So family is just... I don't know what the fuck that shit means. Personally, I keep saying, I'm going to say it till the day I die. Family is essentially people you can't fuck. Family are people that you can't fuck. Family are people you can't fuck. But you're going to fuck them anyways. I said what I said. Yeah, I fucking stutter. I've heard so many damn stories about family. I'm glad I was born the way I was. I'm glad I was raised the way I was. Because to be honest, if I wasn't born and raised the way that I was, I would be talking about how much I absolutely hate my family. I'd be talking about how this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. And okay, I say it like that, assuming that they wouldn't accept who the fuck I am just from the small experience I did have with one of my, none of my siblings are biologically related, but one of my siblings, uh, actual parents, I don't know how the fuck she found me on fucking Facebook, but she found me on Facebook. And I thought, Okay, like if she can have a connection with her daughter, like I can, I'm fine being the medium for a good purpose, for a good reason. I play the medium a lot for fucking people, but I don't mind being a medium for a good purpose and for a good thought and just to help somebody out. But the way that she reacted towards the way that Abney and I were just like shoving ourselves, we're like being close and bumping shoulders. And she said something that got me to become so defensive. I'm just like, this is your fucking daughter. 
This is your fucking Down syndrome daughter. This is your fucking child being happy and you're upset because we're bumping shoulders. She's a fucking physical child. And when I say she's a physical, not physical child, because she's, uh, what is she, 23, 22? She's a couple years younger than me. She's in her 20s now. She is a physical being, and, like, she could vocalize probably a little bit better if my parents didn't, well, if our parents, if our adoptive parents, if our caretakers didn't always yell... And always like, come on, hurry! It's like, they're so snappy. It honestly irritates and irks me to listen because I will admit, I do still live at home where the fuck home is because home is actually in here for me. Home isn't anywhere outside because there's nobody that's accepting of me and there's nobody friendly towards me. Everybody's tolerant towards me. And I've realized that. Honestly, like, I don't blame you guys for being tolerant towards me. I'm a fucking great person if you can get close to me. I'm a fucking doer. I will provide things. I am light. I am happiness. I am peace. But there's also a war going on inside that nobody wants to talk about. So I got to have the deep and hard conversations with myself. Now, I've literally thought I'll tie back to it eventually. I've literally thought about it to myself, like the way that I treat trying to find a good conversation should be the exact same way I treat dating. I shouldn't have expectations for others to be as deep as me. I shouldn't have expectations for people to want to talk about the exact same things as me. But at the same time, when it comes to dating and conversation, I should also understand that I need to draw a line with those that I'm willing to waste my body, time, and energy with because... If you can't even be a third of the deep that I am, even when I'm acting shallow and stupid, I'm still smarter than most people. And for the fact that I don't always consider myself to be a smart person, it's just like, this ain't common sense. What? And to be honest, common sense really isn't all that common. I've learned that working through Asheville and Seal Coat. And when we used to fucking put up cones, we used to fucking, fucking put up big old yell caution tape, warn motherfuckers, we'd even sit at the job site saying, hey, don't go there! Go where? Go where? Go, ah! How the fuck did you make in between the cones, the caution tape, the barrier, and us yelling at you? Where the fuck did you come from? Hell? Heaven? Middle- Oh, you're on Middle Earth. Back to the point. So, it's Midgard. So, it's like, I know, it doesn't matter how loud you make the sa- sign. It doesn't matter how big you make the sign. It doesn't matter how bright you make the sign. If those want to read it, they will. If those don't, they won't. And I've even been one of those victims that didn't read a sign that was unaware of a sign. I was working once uh, for the moving company I was with, uh, Junk Removal, I did. We're in Detroit, and we more or less had a layaway, in a sense, because we had to wait for a customer who wanted us to come and blah, 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 blah. I tried to come early, couldn't. So for two fucking hours, we're in Detroit. I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do. I sent my area. I don't know nobody here. And if I did, I still wouldn't be trying to hang out with them because I got a big-ass truck. You don't think nobody would fucking steal that bitch, especially when it's full of shit? Mm, money! Which is what the world runs on and shit. So, well, we're in Detroit. I was just like, fuck it, shopping. I went to one thrift store and picked up some books, met some intelligent black people, very intelligent daughter and grand, like the whole entire gene and pool. I'm like, God damn, from grandma to mother to daughter, all y'all smart as whip. Y'all could, I hope y'all own something. Uh, and then I went to another business that I think was also black owned and she had like this little sign that said no bags in. Well, I just went shopping and all this and all that. And I didn't even really see it. Like I'm just vibing, doing my own shit as I typically do in life because why the fuck am I paying, t- paying attention to your business? Are you in front of me? Are you bugging me? Are you disturbing my energy? Are you hurting somebody? Is there something piercing my ear that's bothering me? Something about my energy telling me I need to spend more time and energy elsewhere aside from me? No. Okay. Now I'm going to focus on what the fuck's the main main important project me just like the main important project for your life should be you and whatever the fuck you want to produce whatever the fuck you want to create which is why like for as much as i want something there are some things that you could always put on the back burner when it comes to love i can love my sports i can love my videos i can love my writing i can still love but the love that i am trying to push on the most is that sensual sexual physical attraction from a body and a mind but i've always collected bodies over minds and i'm just like ah, these goddamn ovaries fucking fooled me again she ain't got a brain but she got a body and i bang the fuck out of it and now i'm fucking pissed because this bitch keeps arguing about blah blah this and blah 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 this and blah blah and now i have to deal with my emotions on top of her emotions with all this bottling up because as a dude you're not really taught to express your emotions you're not really taught how to deal with your emotions you're just told to bottle them up you're just told to go away you just kill yourself essentially so for me 
to disregard that sign was just okay simple human common sense but the way that i interacted after it she snapped at me for a second like hey didn't you read the sign I'm like oh i'm sorry man I'm completely kept my calm kept the tone that i always typically keep unless i'm performing i'm sorry i didn't see that sign i i didn't mean to and i literally gave her my bag with no fucking issue your place your rules i don't own anything in this world the only thing that I have is this body of mine. So, so long as your rules are not being overly dictative, so long as your rules aren't being monarchist, so long as your rules are within reason, I can understand. It's a fucking store in Detroit where there's lots of murderings, lots of robberies, where giving a fuck is like rarely there. So I get why she wouldn't want me to walk around with a bag through her store where it's hard to see and tight aisles and not many cameras and not many things to be able to view me. I get it. I get it. Common sense put two and two together, but I've walked in so many stores with bags in my hands. I just thought whatever. But for the fact that she approached me and told me about it, regardless of the way that she would approach me, like if she would approach me snarkily and shit like that, I would just walk right out that bitch. I don't give a fuck. You ain't got to have my money. I could take this money and either save the bitch up or spend it somewhere else. But for the fact that she came up respectfully and said that and I backpedaled her oh I'm sorry and then she understood that like I'm, I even said I'm not from here I'm just blah blah blah, blah. I, I get overly sharing because I want you to get why I am saying what I'm saying and I've had to deal with so much disinformation or just low amount of information it's just like the fuck like at this point in my time, in my life, in my experience, I'm like, you can be upset at me and you can be mad at me for whatever the fuck you want to. But if you did not train me, if you did not teach me to do something to the way that you like it, fuck you. You had the time to. You just didn't think to. Fuck you. Because you could have, but you chose to take this power stance of yelling at me and making me feel smaller and diminishing me. But essentially, it's all you're teaching me is you have low emotional regulation, low emotional control. And that's fine with me. But you're not going to do this to me every single day because eventually it's going to start to pick apart at my mind. And I do have this shut off switch of my emotions. Like, yes, I can be super emotional. And I can also be a psychopath that doesn't give a fuck about who's in front of me. I've always thought if I ever did do anything dark and dangerous, there is an age limit to who I would hurt and who I would harm. So those that are over X amount of age, you're fine. Those that are under X amount of age, you're fine. But those that are in my age range, you're all fucking fair play, especially if you're going to be disrespecting me. No elderly person, regardless of how hit hard they want to hit, will ever concern me. No child under the age of like, I don't know. Because for the way that they be building kids nowadays, like, <laughs> what the fuck is in this goddamn water and food, ladies and gentlemen? But, like, if a kid hits me, that's not a threat level. The fuck? They're learning. They're small. They're young. They're weak. They're Like, that's never going to be someone like, oh, I'm going to whoop your ass now, little fucker. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you see him, motherfucker? You should have touched me. No, what the fuck, ladies and gentlemen? It's like you've been waiting to fuck somebody up and you just jump at the first chance. No, no, I need the right chance, not the first chance. Yeah, just because the shot's open, don't mean I'm going to take it. Fuck, I'll pass on to somebody else. Anybody else but me would take the shot. Why? Because they always teach you, shoot your shot. Why? Why do I got to shoot my shot? Is it really even an open spot to shoot a shot? Like, is it even worth it? Like, what if I shoot my shot then regret it? Because people tend to do that. Why do you think people cheat? Why do you think people lie? Why do you think people manipulate? Because they committed to something that they didn't originally want to, but it seemed good at the time, as everything else does. Like, things are meant to die eventually. Rather it be when y'all die or before. Just not many people are willing to deal with death in the other ways that's not a physical aspect, like a death of a relationship, death of a friendship, death of just a lot of things, which I guess both of them were just... <sighs> friendship slash relationship death of experiences because you don't remember in your memory anymore it's just why are so many people assholes for no goddamn reason and yeah tie back family like i keep saying it don't really mean all that much to me and i guess now i'll go deeper into what the family home life was yelled at constantly i had siblings that were in diapers for god knows how fucking long longer than me that's all i know i came here at four so like <laughs> i don't learn i actually i don't I think I was ever in diapers, to be honest. I did piss the bed once, and that's just for the fact that I wanted to fucking feel what the hell it felt like. Never pissed the bed past that, but I do wake up with wet dreams. I know this has nothing to do with anything else, but ladies and gentlemen, it's my mind. Leave me the fuck alone. My space, my domain. I don't have much in this world, but at least have this. And this will forever be mine until I go through it. So, 
siblings wore diapers for the longest time. And it's more or less because they're mentally disabled. And like, the more I stop and think about it, the more that I realize the family that I was with was not well-equipped enough to be able to do what they needed to do for us, essentially. Because like I said, the lady did whatever the fuck she wanted to. What she wanted is what she wanted, regardless if it was a necessity or just something that she wanted. And most of the things that she wanted weren't ever fucking necessities and didn't help anybody even include ding her which annoys me because whatever she did we all had to either clean up after or we had to suffer through and with that always in mind i've always thought if any fucking girl that i date reminds me of this lady i am going to fucking leave why because i don't love her i call her the lady for a goddamn reason like you guys could be like ethan but you should be more grateful why I would have been dead if she never adopted me. No. Somebody else would have. Because if it's supposed to be, it's going to be. Even if it's not you, or well, somebody. Why should I be grateful that she... I'm pretty sure... Like, this is what fucks me the most mentally. Because I, I didn't know how to say it. I didn't know how to prove it. And I didn't really know how to convey it. But I had an ex once. I have multiple exes. But I had an ex and her mom was very smart. Which is what I loved about the whole entire family. I I felt like I had a good dynamic with family. It's just the person I was dating was the only reason I knew the family. It's just like, wow. Just, wow. Why couldn't you have more sisters? <laughs> Wouldn't have made any difference. But the mom finally saw what I've been seeing for a lifetime. The mom came up with like, wow, Ethan's like she wants you to date. It's like she thinks you guys are dating, or it's like she treats you like a boyfriend. I'm like, finally! Finally! What fuck? Because I don't have many references of what a good family looks like. I don't have many references for what a good mom looks like. I don't have many references for a lot of things, so if I don't know how to deal with it, I'm just like, okay, this is how I fucking deal with it. I just kind of just like taking the brushes for a couple seconds, a couple minutes, a couple interactions until I realized, oh, that's like, I get weird feelings is how I could express how interacting with her was when I was growing up. Just because she would call me babe, she'd call me honey, she'd call me sweetie, she'd call me cutie. And just the way she would fucking hug me and touch me, like, it gave me fucking weird vibes. Like, she trying to fuck me vibe. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And like, it gets even worse. Like, it, okay, I guess to a certain degree, it's fine if your mom spank, smacks you on the butt. But, like, I was bent over, and I'm pretty sure she touched more of, like, less of the like, back of my butt crack and balls than she did my ass. I'm just like, that's sexual assault. And, like, it gave me that weird feeling. I wish I could explain the fucking feeling. Like, it's like the feeling of panic, but not panic. It's not like an anxiety attack, but it's like when you first injure yourself, like, let's say... You slam your fucking, like, let's say you fucking drop a five, ten pound box on your fucking finger. It's just like that feeling, but it's not like pain, but it's like internally it just like made me feel weird and yucky. And that's the only way I can describe it. Because even for as much knowledge as I currently have, I still need more knowledge to be able to perceive the thoughts I'm trying to perceive to you guys for you guys to get it. And that is just what really started to divide the line. Uh, on top of all the fucking yelling and the fucking bullshit and the f it's the yelling and the lying is the main two reasons why I've realized that I'm in a toxic home and it's because I don't really know like I kept saying reference wise I don't know what the fuck good is I don't know what the fuck bad is so what is good what is bad what did I do and I've come to learn and come to terms of as long as I am not forcefully I'm gonna do this a handful of times as long as I'm not raping people as long as I'm not molesting people as long as I'm not grooming people as long as I'm not human trafficking people as long as I'm not forcefully forcing my energy on people I don't ever think I'm doing anything bad I do understand that some of the things I may say might come off different but if I say something that comes off sideways feel free to correct me feel free to talk to me about it. but for the fact that most people are so non-confrontational which I will admit I am a non-confrontational person but here's the reason why if you wouldn't if you can't even understand, understand the things that I am saying, it's essentially like arguing with a goddamn child. I refuse to argue with children. I will talk to children. I will debate with children. But I'm not... Re I'm not going to fight with you. Regardless if you have the body of an adult. Regardless if you talk and do adult things. If I do perceive you to have a childish mind, I don't give a fuck. I ain't gonna waste time. So yes, I too am a non-confrontational person, but it's under the understanding that your intellect does not match mine. So it doesn't matter what the fuck I say to you. It doesn't matter how I say to you, you wouldn't fucking get it. So I'm just gonna leave you and never ever have you in my life again because you're too damn childish to be around me. People assume you grow up Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I literally personally feel like, because I was thinking about this as I was driving, because I think too goddamn much. I was driving, I'm thinking, you know what? I literally had my adulthood when I was younger. 
I'm having my childhood kind of right the fuck now. You know what? I'm going to be right on track for a midlife crisis because I had my childhood. Technically speaking, I'm having it now. I had my adulthood that was fucking from 3 to 18, roughly. I don't know. 3 to 18. And then once I became an adult, became an adult, bam, child phase. And like for another 10 to 15 years, 18 years, I'm going to be right on time for a midlife fucking crisis. Because, like, why the fuck would I redo my childhood or my adulthood if I've already done both? Like, two things out of the way. Next step is midlife crisis. After that is over the hill. After that is death, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I, the programming washed off a couple years ago. And, like, there's still some parts I got to scrub my brain to get me to be less, more societally normal and more clinically insane. And it's fine if you don't like my brain, but what you have to get, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm not a danger to you. I am only a danger to myself. I'm only a danger to myself because I keep speaking these thoughts so openly and so freely because I want more peace and understanding of myself. So I do this for my, me more than I do for you, and I'm leaving this log for when I'm and you guys don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. Because they're always going to misdiagnose. They're always going to tell the story that they want to. This is why it's his story and not reality. <clears throat> so here's my reality. And I'm telling my story before somebody else gets a chance to and completely fucks it up. I've got countless upon countless upon countless upon countless of videos of who I am and how I act and how I perceive reality. So therefore, when I do go bye-bye. That's so all you gotta do is YouTube me, ladies and gentlemen. You'll find the shit. I want to scrub it clean off the internet. But for those that have seen the videos, well, then it's like, well, I knew who he was before he became nobody. <laughs> family is just a fucked up and weird concept. Like I said earlier, essentially family to me is just people you can't fuck. It does not necessarily mean family's going to always have your back. It does not necessarily mean family protects you. It does not necessarily mean family's going to support you. It does not necessarily mean... Like, it doesn't mean any of the shit that I was painted and taught in uh, movies and society and TV shows and all this and all that. Because, like I said, they program you from the fucking start. Well, I didn't probably say it yet, but now I did. But they program you from the fucking start. And if you pay attention to the programming perfectly, because it says your programs will be on later. Programs. Like, literally, English. It's once I... I love fucking TikTok. I cannot give TikTok enough fucking grace and glory, which is why I get uh, the government is trying to make sure that no TikTok is added on to any governmental phones due to the fact that too many people pay attention and so much information. Like, even though they want to say that the reason why TikTok is a bad app is because China is taking all the data to sell it to other people. Motherfuckers, you guys are doing the same goddamn thing. You're only mad because they're doing it better than you. But then again, you guys have fucking Facebook. So, like, you guys have your own stupid shit that you use to get our information. Like, I'm not fucking retarded this shit. I just don't talk about it too much. I haven't gotten a warning yet, so technically speaking, I have no strikes. Um, or maybe I did. I just didn't realize it. <laughs> Me. Hey, if that message is not direct, I don't give what the fuck you mean. You gotta have a motherfucker and big, black, intimidating shit and say, Ethan, and he's gotta grab me, too, because he can just be like, hey, you should just shut up, because I'm like, the fuck do you mean? Are you talking to me? I don't know. He must be talking to somebody else. Because, like, I I need that directness that most people don't get. And I try to explain to people, unless you are very direct to me, I'm just going to ignore it. And when I was younger, I used to read in between the lines, and that's what used to get me in trouble, because people would insinuate things like, uh, I kind of want to clean the do later on today. I don't really want to do it by myself. And I've texted a handful of my friends. But, you know, I've just, I don't really want to, be all alone and just be cleaning in this big old space and like last time I cleaned it took me about five hours but you know I guess hey are you doing anything later on today like by then they they literally wouldn't get to the part where they would ask me to help by then I could just like feel something wanting me to and I'm just like I'll help you just to get used just to get abused just to give it neglected. Just to get forgotten. You forgot to thank me in your thanking ceremony of the people that have helped you. You are a self-made person, really? You ain't gonna talk about what your boyfriend did for you. You ain't gonna talk about what your girlfriend did to you. For you, not to you. You ain't gonna talk about what your mom, your dad, what your uncle, your aunt, your cousins, all these strangers have helped you. I am not self-made, ladies and gentlemen. I've been touched by many people. And I mean that sexually and not because I was molested as a child. Which explains why I was so sexually weird and like... The more I've come along, I'm starting to believe I'm a little, probably asexual, just a little bit. 
And for the fact that I was molested as a child, it just literally screws up my whole entire sexuality. Like, I feel like I became hypersexual for the fact that a lot of people go one or the other way when it comes to being molested and or raped. Either they become hypersexual and they just want sex. And I feel like it's to take a sense of the control and the power back that they didn't have from the original person that raped them, which is why I feel like some people also have the consent, non-consent thing because they didn't have consent the first time. And it's like from what I've come to understand and grasp about kinks and shit like that, it comes from your trauma. And I'm like, I don't even think I have kinks. I think I'm so fucked up. I like I could get an erection, but sometimes I'm just like, I think I have to piss. But like I have noticed, and I, it's kind of weird. Like I have noticed, my dick gets like really rock hard solid if I see a f- mom doing a good mommy job. Like if she's taking care of her child, she's being attentive. She sweet talks her child. Like now, oh, just do it. I'm mean, like, what do you want, baby? Oh, you want this? Or what do you want, sweetie? What do you want, honey? What do you want? And is willing to listen and be attentive. God damn, my dick ain't never been hard. And I think it's mainly because, yet again, like I said, uh, kinks are formed from your childhood traumas. I didn't have good parents! I didn't. And, like, for the longest time, I thought they were good. I thought they were good. I thought they were good. But as time has progressed, as I've made friends and acquaintances and had experiences, I've come to realize they did the best that they could, but they could have done better. Like, he could have picked a better wife. She should have been locked up in an asylum or some shit like that. I don't know how fu- Like, yeah, I do. They promote disorderly conduct, essentially. Like, they say that you can't do anything, but ladies and gentlemen, crime doesn't stop because crime pays. Either it pays the criminal or it pays the cop or it pays the lawyer or it pays the doctor or it pays the nurse. It pays the government. Crime pays, and that's the only reason why crime exists. Try doing something that doesn't pay anything. It's not cost efficient to be a good... It's not cost efficient to be a good subservient person to the world. It's not cost efficient to help people. It's not cost efficient to cost time. And time is money. And it costs money. And money is money. It costs energy. And energy is money. And it costs this. And that's money. And it's like, why? Why the fuck for the fact that we humans, not we as in black people, not we as the disabled, not we as the mentally disabled, not we as in youth, but we as humans choose the prices on everything. So why the fuck can't somebody just say... We're going to lower it. We, as humans, choose a lot of the things that we do and deal with, and yet we keep bitching and complaining. Like, wait, 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 wait. wait. Where is shot? Where is shot? Shut I can't get it. I get it. I get it. Somebody told somebody told somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody to do something, and now we all got to do it. Ain't nobody ever stopped and said, wait, 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 wait a second. Who the fuck told us we had to do this? Like, I get it, mom, pa. You got to do it because the government says. But if I ask Uncle Sam, what's he going to answer? He ain't. Oh, is it because he makes a bunch of money to sit in the office and absolutely do nothing? Is it because he makes money to, you know, talk about doing shit but not really talking about doing shit? Like, for as powerful as words are, words can also be powerless. Because I love the fact that if you pay attention to news, many uh Many of the newscasters, the politicians will always be like, our hearts are with your family. Fuck your hearts. Give me some money. God damn. Like, I get it. You fucking care. But do you truly? If people came out and spoke more openly as much as I do, well, one, uh, that would definitely collapse the system for as fucked up as it is and go to show that we're not all that special. Like, yes, we are, but not really because we're all special in group methods. As in, I feel like I'm related to a lot of people due to pain and destruction and disrupt and chaos. So like, even though I am an orphan, I know I have relatives, but we're only relayed by pain, which is like, it kind of cool because we can talk about the shit and the trauma because what I've come to learn from experience and time is unless they have experienced the exact same uh, setbacks as you or something similar, they're not going to give a fuck about you. They're just like, oh, you playing a violin, aren't you? You expect me to give a shit? You expect me to cry? Bitch, that don't exist. Oh, you don't know about the real world, do you? You believe everything that's painted in front of you. You watch the news. You probably brush your teeth 16 times a day to get that fluoride intake, don't you? You believe everything that people tell you. Do you not know information is free? It's just hard to find, and sometimes they even edit that shit so they make sure that you find what they want you to see, which is why I find it hard to do my own research because it's like, wait, 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 wait. I got to do research on the person that did the research on the person that did the research on the person that did the research because I'm not even quite sure if they did it correctly or if the research was funded by money and if it's funded by money and it's funded by greed and it's funded by people that want us, the sheep, to be slaughtered, then, um, 
I don't think I'm going to eat this. I, I don't trust the pasture it was created in. I do not trust any of it because I looked into it and I looked so deep into it. I got stuck in a fucking hole. Oh, I guess they're going to bury me in it. So, like, I even take the information I find off the internet with a grain of salt. Like, I, I remember I had this stint where I'd just share shit on Facebook about missing kids, blah, this, blah, that. And I, I wouldn't even click onto links because I have this big assumption that when they click onto your links, it's how you, your accounts get hacked, it's how this and that. So, like, I'll share it just because I'm like, I don't want any missing kids. Like, I would love for the fact that if I had a child that went missing, if I would have went missing, like, if I knew somebody that went missing, I would love to have that support and things. So, I always try to think, what can I do to help in trying to be a hero when essentially I can't be a hero in other people's lives i can only be a hero in my life and it just took me so long to grasp that that i've wasted not necessarily wasted but i've experienced i've learned that i am not an issue the world around me is and the way that the world perceives people i think like me is an issue but for the fact that i am going just to be labeled whatever the fuck they want to i am just going to try to explain from the best ability from the best knowledge that i currently have right now what I go through, what I experience, who the fuck I am. And rather, you can choose if I'm really a bad person compared to who chooses. The agenda makers will make anybody a good guy. Anybody could be good. Anybody could be bad because that's all perceived notions. If I don't touch people, if I don't rape people, if I don't manipulate people, if I don't kidnap people, if I don't human traffic people, if I do not forcefully, negatively put my energy upon people then how the fuck am i a bad guy because i spoke a little too loud once because i used the wrong forming of english to the wrong person because apparently you're not supposed to swear around women nobody fucking taught me that but that's old fucking treatment so i'm a bad guy because i said bitch in front of a chick because i said asshole because i said fuck like women want to be treated like men aside from when it comes to accountability sometimes but some women are willing to be treated like men down to the accountability part yet aren't willing to listen to men's emotions when they feel emotional so that's i'm <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, i'm not trying to bash women it's just gonna it's going to sound like it but what i also neglected to say is i i always feel like i have a feminine energy for as many females that have been in my life and for as many times i've interacted and how helpful and hindering but that's both genders to be honest that's I don't know if I've had any hate or backfire from non-binaries quite yet. But that's from both genders have help and hate and anger and all this and all that. But I feel like I've been able to let, and I do let females slide a lot more because of the stigma that I was force-fed and that I learned through society just to find out that it, it really just depends on the room and it depends on the occasion if the female is going to have the higher hand or if she's going to have the lower hand. And like, in most cases, how I've come to the conclusion, you can crucify me if you fucking want to, Unless it's being raped, unless it's being kidnapped, unless uh, murdering could be a part of it too. Unless it's being murdered, raped, kidnapped, murdered. Women have the upper hand. Jobs, y'all got a. You were born with a fucking business. You just find yourself too prude to want to use OnlyFans to become a porn star or maybe you just don't want to be real. Do you have a b deeper mind? you want to do more with your time? you want to do more with your energy? You'd be like, you're literally born with a fucking business. And I can't, I say it like that because I've come to learn that so many fucking females use OnlyFans. I'm I'm 100% fine. Get your back, get your money. You got to do what you got to do because of those that made the fucking rules that we now have to fucking play by. I get it. I get it. Until the rules are destroyed, we got to fucking play by them. So I'm not trying to bash any female that's in the OnlyFans industry, but the porn industry, mm, could have just been a cam chick. But like, different story, sex work and spiritual work with that. Parenting. If you're a female... Regardless if you are able, and I've I kind of heard it both ways to be honest, but I've heard it way more of the female getting uh what am I thinking of custody of the kids. I've I've seen it way more that the judges favor the females over the dudes. But I did have this one instance where I was with this one chick, just the fling at the moment. She was talking about how she uh encountered her second child and how she encountered it was through an ape uh experience, and I'm just like. I don't know why the fuck I don't say rape, but through an ape experience, and I was just like, and she tried to fight it in court so she could at least have full custody because like, that child technically speaking isn't supposed to be born, but because daddy was Caucasian, if I remember correctly, daddy was also well protected because once you get into a group and one of those groups, like the military group, the fucking police department, uh, rich, super rich or mega rich or just rich in general, I don't know. 
Um, what other group basically protects those people and they can't do any fucking harm? And I'm pretty sure there's another fucking cult that protects their people like no other. It's just like, if you knew, if only you fucking knew, the world would be a fucking different place, which is why they don't... Sh like, they share the information, but you guys aren't always showing the information because you don't look for it. I look for it. I want for it. I make sure my algorithms know I am only seeking the truth. I make sure the universe knows I am only seeking the truth. I make sure everything knows I want honesty regardless of how rude it is. I want honesty regardless of how heavy it is. I want honesty regardless of how harsh it is. I want honesty because I was raised upon dishonesty even though I was taught it is rude to lie. I was taught it, it'll get you to hell faster if you lie. I was taught lying is bad, but I was brought up on lies. Make that make sense, ladies and gentlemen. I was brought up on lies. I was brought up on impatience. I was brought on brought up on intolerance. Yet here I am being an yet here I am being a tolerable, intelligent, patient person. I became everything that I essentially wanted. I became the exact opposite of what was given to me. And what always kind of strikes me in my head every once in a while is, one time the lady stopped me. And she's like, "Wow, you turned out better than we expected." Like. You're a better person than I am. Actually, no, I think it was that you are a better person than I am. Because I remember replying back with, I know. Ladies and gentlemen and non-binaries, I have been self-aware since the age of 12. I knew I was in hell. I just didn't want to believe myself. I just thought everybody looked like this. I thought everybody could do the exact same things I could. I thought everybody had parents that act like this. I thought everybody, aside from having like 12 to 13 siblings entering and exiting on the house, I thought everybody. But even with that thought process, I still didn't want to try to make friends because how the fuck do you make friends when people say, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing what, being myself? I ain't, did I hurt you? Did I physically touch you? Did I try to rape you? Did I try to manipulate you? Did I try to kidnap you? Did I do anything to force my energy negatively upon you? Or did I just fucking speak? Did I just flail, flail my arms? Like I saw you kind of wince back a little bit, but we're not going to talk about how your mom or your dad or some abusive ex treated you. But you're going to talk about me. Because I will notice things not bring it up because who am I to ask about things that you don't want to talk about? If you want to open up about feel free to. I'll listen to anybody. I'll listen to everybody. Like, I will listen to all of those that try to work in peace and try to create and try to grow and try to heal themselves. Those that typically wouldn't get a voice, uh, wouldn't get ears to listen to, but not everybody because those that rape people, those that molest people, those that uh, human traffic. I don't give a shit what y'all guys say. I don't give a fuck what the criminals guys say to a certain extent because if you're guilty and you know you're guilty, fuck you. I ain't going to listen to you. But if you're guilty due to association, if you're guilty for being honest, if you're guilty because they need somebody to depend for the crime and, well, you fit the description because I have come to learn from some more studying that some people are on death row, some people are in jail, and some people are in prison just for a body to fill. Because they were wrongfully done. Because the story went so well. It's like, it gotta be you. And then they find the real killer. And it's like, or the real culprit. And it's like, well, yeah, we caught them. But we can't just let you out. What the fuck do you mean you can't just let me out? Motherfucker, you got the real bad guy. I'm just here because you thought I was the bad guy. Hook me up to a polygraph. Tell him the fucking truth. Set me up in court. Figure out. I was being honest about the whole time. I told the fucking judge. I told the fucking lawyer. I told everybody that I was fucking innocent. And I spent five years in prison. You fucking found the motherfucker in your town and you can't let me free? What type of world do we live in when even though that they find justice and they find the answers that they're looking for, but people will still be wronged? What type of world is that? I tell if you ask me. But then again, for the fact that we do have the power and the ability to manifest anything that we want in this world, this can be heaven. It's just being able to get past the things inside your head. It's being able to get past those that are in front of you trying to stop you. It's getting past the weight that we all are told. Family is everything. You shouldn't leave your family. <gasps> it's a job. You need this job. You need this money. Give them two weeks, even though they'll fire you without even letting you know. Ladies and gentlemen, wake up. Uh, I'm only a psycho because I'm too fucking aware of what the fuck is going on in psychology, what the fuck is going on in reality, what is going on in society, what is going on 
It's not my fault I was woken up. But now that I'm awake, I'm going to fucking scream and shout and let it all out. <laughs> Family doesn't mean much to me. Which is why, like, I'm glad I don't have a kid with just anybody, just for the fact that I've had so many bad body experiences. I don't want to bring my child into the world that I don't even feel safe to be in. And I feel like, until I feel safe to be in this world, I'm not going to try to pursue a mate just to have a child. I figure, at this point, the way that things are going, I'm just going to pay somebody to have a child with, if not a prostitute, in a sense. If not in vitro, where they take my sperm, find an egg, I don't give a fuck who's that it is. And essentially, I have the child. Actually, no, 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 no. Because if, if I do it that way, rather if I do a prostitute way or the in vitro and we can choose, like, I'm going to have an Asian child and a Mexican child and a black child and a blue child and a green child and an orange child. Because if I'm rich and I don't need a body, ladies and gentlemen, finances, I'm already mentally strong enough that I feel like I'm not going to, clearly, if I'm going to adopt kids. Wait, I was talking about having kids not adopt. Oh, I'm my own might own an ugh, might own an orphanage that's one of my goals just so I can help the community because it's one thing to say that you give a shit it's another thing to actually truly do and I figure if I can implement a stable situation for those that are, aren't are in stable situations for the fact that I was never in one I feel like that can help drastically in changing the world development but that also might get me destroyed and or killed or canceled for the fact that I give more fucks about you guys than I do myself. And the only way to give more fucks about you guys than I do myself is by taking care of myself, learning myself and being able to project the thoughts clear enough that people can understand me and want to support me and want to help me. If you want to help the world, you got to help me or help others like me, help like minded like me. But most people are just like, fuck people, fuck bodies, fuck this, fuck that. Yeah, you're right. What does it matter? We're only here for a short time, but we don't try to make the best out of it. We try to be selfish about it. We try to not give a shit. We try to give too much shit. It's this, it's that. And I'm just like, I just want to feel something most of the times. I don't want to enter the room and feel this fake superficial happiness. And of course people are happy to see me. If you knew what all I did, you'd be happy to see me too. And that's always in the back of my head. Would you still be happy to see me if I did nothing in life? Probably not. Yeah, here I am happy to see you when it's all you do is just annoy in a sense. When it's all you do is judge me all the time. When it's all you do is prod me all the time. When it's all you do is what everybody else does. Force feeds into the negativity but never wants to add any positivity. I am so positive for me to be negative is a rare occurrence. But honestly, I'm a negative person. But for the fact that I realize internally that we don't have to speak this into existence. We don't have to be like this. We don't have to act like this. I'm consciously aware that I can choose rather if I want to be. Others are just doing it. <laughs> and it bothers me. Like Being rude and being nice both are free things and you choose to be an asshole. Okay. okay. It's, it's your life. Do it how you want to. But living life like that just means you're going to be farther away from me and farther away from my community community family ain't never really meant shit to me but people throw it around to me like ladies and gentlemen i'm a child of the world it doesn't matter if you love me i have to love me at the end of the day and i find it so hard because people always say i love you i care about you blah blah this blah blah that but do you watch any of my videos do you support any of my videos do you share any of my videos do you comment on any of my videos do you like any of my videos what is love if you don't really give a shit what is love if you don't ever show it what is love if you only say i love you but what have you done to show what you mean by the words that you say because you say i love you and then you continue to ignore me you say i love you and then you continue to yell at me you say that i love you and every time i express my boundaries you continue pushing closer 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 to the point where i just want to put a bullet through your brain like i don't even want to want you out of my life i want you out of existence that's how much you fucking disrespect me but You'll say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you like the fucking Band-Aid. It doesn't work like that. Either you sit down and talk to me and have the hard conversations, or you don't. That's love to me. Actually, no, I'll explain a couple things with love. Love to me, because everybody wants to say that shit like they're going to fix everything. 
Love to me is being able to have the hard conversations. Love to me is being able to be open and honest with what you have done, what you are going to do, and what you may have changed or not. Love to me is having baggage, because everybody does, but not letting the baggage affect how it treats, but not letting the baggage a lot, but not letting the baggage choose how you treat others. Because everybody to a certain degree has been fucked up, but we don't consider it the same level of fucked up. We don't consider it importance. We don't consider it re- relevant. Yet we'll question, what the fuck is wrong with them? You ever look at the childhood? You ever talk to them? You ever actually listen to them? Because you might be talking to people, but are you talking to people or are you just l- talking at people? Are you just waiting for your response? Are you just waiting until it's your time to take stage and the mic? Yeah, I can speak! Which also, I have issues talking with people on the phone because I just never know when to uh, cut it, like, when they're done speaking. When it comes to verbal conversations, I'm literally reading your whole entire body like, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, it's my time to respond. Oh, now it's my time to shut the fuck up. Oh, now it's my time to respond. Oh, shut up. But over the phone, it's like... Sorry for cutting you off somewhere. I wasn't trying to. I ain't done nothing to fuck you, Shane. Or I don't even know if you're waiting for me or if you're like, well, I'm trying to listen to you. Like, phones just make it so goddamn hard to communicate with people. But that's probably, well, that's one of the two reasons I hate talking on the phone. The second reason is I hate the fucking radiation and how hot my phone gets when I get up to my ear. So, like, if I do talk to certain people on the phone, what you have to realize is you're a special person. I mean, I really value you more than I value the fact that phones irritate the fuck out of me. But most people don't realize that because they don't know my definition of love. Or love at all, to be honest. They know what they assume is love. And love is essentially hate, but just titled differently. Which is... <laughs> this was always pissing me off, too. I hate them! Then why do you always hang out with them? I hate them! Whose present is this? Theirs? I hate them! This is like your fifth time being with them, though. I hate them! Who are you texting? Shh! Shut the fuck up. Don't tell anybody I see them. Don't tell anybody I hang out with them. Don't tell anybody. Stop saying you fucking hate them then. Do you have your love and hate fucked up? Because the way that people taught me in life, I fucking do. I don't know what the fuck love is. I don't know what the fuck hate is. Because you all fucking use them bitches interchangeably like you fucking can. No. Hate means you don't think about them. You don't give shit about them. You don't want to see them. Love means I want to be around them. I'm supporting them. I'm caring about them. But for some fucking reasons, no, and that's why I'm so fucked up, because I'm like, do I love them, or am I being over-obsessive, because, <laughs> yeah, I gotta have a shitty family life, it just means I don't really know how to regulate much, but I've come to learn with time, with the people experience, to regulate myself, and the time and the energy that I put towards a person is so fucking psychotic, and so crazy, and so off the walls, I probably should have restraining orders against me, but I don't, because I even think, god damn, Ethan, because how I reason and logicize things to myself is, because I can't have anybody to fucking talk to, and nobody really gives a fuck about my brain like I do, and nobody can get, get deep conversations. Essentially, the way I talk is like how I want a relationship. I want somebody that gets me, not just a fucking glove, not just somebody I can mm, speak to. Like, anybody can talk to me, but don't mean they fucking understand me, and it doesn't mean that they want to. So, son of a bitch, where is it going with this? How the fuck did I go 50 minutes and then I go blank? I hate when that shit happens. Uh, fuck! Guess I don't want me to get the message out. I don't know, I think I was saying something about the way that I think, the way that I date, all goes hand in hand. They don't want you to find somebody that matches with you. They don't want somebody that understands you. They, like, literally the whole entire point of life is to fight the system, which is essentially, I'm not saying, like, the governmental system, but we're essentially parasites on this planet. And what I mean by fight the system means we have to find other parasites like us that are open-minded, that are willing to learn, blah, blah, this, and not try to be parasitic, but try to grow on this earth and help the earth be a better place and try to destroy the bad parasites because there's good parasites and bad parasites but people just fixate on the word itself and think negative connotation parasite what does that mean it inhabits your body and destroys the house well in some movies yes but not always i sometimes think the brain is a parasite of the body because not everybody got one of these i swear i swear 
I swear, and this bitch got too much room in it sometimes. I don't know where the fuck I went before that fucking mind, mind wipe, and I always hate when it fucking happens. Because it doesn't always happen too often, but it's like always happening in the middle of a fucking speech and a rant, and it's like, ah! And it turns out, it's not just a me thing, because now I think about it. When I got this phone, I went to uh, Oost Mobile. And when I was at Oost Mobile, I actually know somebody that works there. And he was talking to a customer while he was waiting on me. Well, not really waiting on me, but waiting on a customer. And then he, he ended up helping me check out and bring out some shit. And he was just like, shit, my brain went just blank. I'm like, oh, shit, nigga, you, your brain do that too? I ain't fucking weird. I'm actually normal. I just got to find my group. Which is why they keep us so fucking divided. Which is why I'm so open and honest with the way that I think, the way that I am. Because how am I going to find people for me if I pretend to be somebody else? They're going to find... I'm going to find people like the person I pretend to compared to the person I am. So therefore, mask off, ladies and gentlemen. You don't get it. And it's fine if you don't get it. Those that do will and those that don't, don't. And it's fine with me. With as much as I've been through and with as much as I'm going to go through and with as much as I'm trying to do, I am fine with those that leave or I'm fine with those that stay, but... If you choose to stay, level up. If you choose to go, that's all right. I say level up as in be willing to be open-minded, be willing to read books, be willing to be stand on your boundaries and say no regardless of the fact. Like Some things I've even thought more in depth about, in depth about because of the fact that it's just it's a fucked up world. I already know this, but it is what you make it. And I'm like, how do I feel about Polly? Personally, the date, no. To be in, like, a poly relationship, like, fuck some poly people, yeah, I've done it. I know I have. And I know I didn't do it. I've even fucked a pregnant chick, but I didn't realize she was pregnant until I did the math of the baby and all this and all that. I'm like, you say that baby's only, like, three months old? We had sex, like, seven months ago. So you're telling me that you're either freshly pregnant or you've been pregnant for a couple of weeks. And I didn't know! That's something you tell somebody! Or maybe it's not. I don't know. How honest is too honest? I literally do not know because for the fact that I grew up in such a weird family dynamic, what I learned from my parents is that they over regurgitate information. And sometimes the way that my dad would compare it to the lady is the lady would do it for manipulation. He would just do it. And it seemed like he was just sucking the happiness and joy from people. I'm like, God damn, you both are vampires. It's different. Like she a banshee the way she yells and screams. And I don't know, they're both banshees, honestly, because they both fucking yell and scream. It's fucking annoying, I swear. They just, like, if they ain't fall for a while, they just fight the fucking fight. And that just irritates the fuck out of me because I hate yelling. And it starts from there. It stems from there. Like, I really try to focus in when I feel this strong urge to hate something. Like, where does this come from? What in my earlier experience has made me dislike the things that, like... Essentially, some people are like, oh, loud, oh, scream like... It doesn't bother some people, but it bothers me. Like, even till this day, I had a job doing handyman, helping out a handyman guy, and him and his girl were getting at it, and, like, I could hear them fucking yelling from outside. Like, it's still kind of winter, snow, and shit like that. I came ready to work outside, because I don't know if I'm working outside or inside, so I was like, fuck this, I ain't going inside. I just literally sat on their fucking porch and waited till he was ready, because that literally reminded me of my childhood, and I'm like, yeah, no, no fucking made the kid inside of me just like get emotional and shit like fuck i hated that shit so i just i try to avoid it as much as possible that and people that smoke cigarettes but somehow i always get stuck with a cigarette smoker i don't fucking know but for as much as i've been trying to focus more on myself and perceive myself more i feel like it's always going to be work in progress ladies and gentlemen if you ever stop working that just means you quit (laughs) <laughs> now I don't mean like stop working a job but I mean like stop working on trying to better yourself trying to better what you want to do trying to hone your skills trying to be sharper just at the end of the day if you love yourself and you care about yourself you're always going to look crazy but remember ladies and gentlemen and binaries if nobody gives a fuck about you then nobody gives a fuck about you Because you're the only one that can. You're the only one that will. Others will claim to, but that's just to get some shit from you. When you have promising things going for you, even though you have no harbor in your, even though you harbor no hate in your heart, even though you aren't willing to be manipulative and schemic, there are people out here in this world that just don't give a shit. Which is why I... I am glad and annoyed that I have the mind that I have because not only is this a blessing, it's a curse because I overthink, I overanalyze. 
But at the end of the day, I realize if it's meant for me, it's meant for me. And if it's not, it's not. So fuck it. If I overanalyze and I fuck it up, it's going to come back if it's meant. If I overanalyze it and I fuck it up and it doesn't come back, it was never meant to me. It was never meant for me to begin with. Sometimes I am the messenger and sometimes I am the messaged. And as I was younger, I was just <clears throat> the one learning shit. It was annoying. Family doesn't mean much to me, but I want it to mean something to me one day. And I will show the kids, rather it be seven, rather it be 70, that love can be found, but don't be looking at other bodies. Love can only be found within. Love can only be found in hobbies. Love can only be found in things, not people. You could possibly find love in people, but is it authentic love or is it manipulative love? And that's always the question that's inside my head. Do they love me or do they love what I do? Because that's very important. Because if they love what you do, they'll not even think twice about cheating on you. But if they truly love you and I mean it and they mean it, then... I don't know, I've always felt like if it was true love, because this is how I think about it. I obsessed over this one body for so long, I've even thought, I can't date nobody. I can't. I can't, 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 because I would cheat on them for that one person. I wouldn't give a fuck how long we're dating. I've even, I've even told some females I was hanging out with and just like kind of chillaxingly fuck them. I'm like, yeah, I know like we're doing this, but like this girl right here, yeah, I love her and I care about her, but I can't get to her because distance, because emotions, blah, this, blah, that. So I'm just letting you know that if she ever became available and said that she wanted to date me, if she ever wanted to be with me, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to let you go. And a lot of them, believe it or not, were surprisingly fine with it. And I'm like... All right, universe, you got your tricks too. <laughs> but I've come to learn if people are offended with the fact that you're honest and those are just dishonest people, I just don't give a shit. And then just to go back on that last little note, my thoughts and feelings have actually changed for the gal, which annoys me because I've just, I obsessed over her for so long. I've talked about her. I've talked to people about her, blah, this, blah, that for a hot second. A photo of her and I was my screensaver, and it's just like... She's wifey until she said something that knifed me. <clears throat> I found the perfect person that I want to have kids with. I still want to have kids. Like, yeah, there could be a chance that, like, I could have my kids, she could have her kids, and then we come back together and marry, but that's not the thought. Like, I know I'm going to have to evolve a couple more times in my mind to say that, because currently me right now is like, I'm not willing to date any fucking female that has three kids. I'm barely willing to date any female that has one kid, but, like, two kids and one kid, fine for me. Three kids, that's too fucking many bodies for me, because... How I have seen people treat other people is they want you to take account for all of the things that they did before you and all the things that they did during you and past you. Well, not necessarily past you, but during you and as time progresses, it's just like, I'm willing to take account for a lot of things, but I'm not going to take account and responsibility for things that you truly do not want me to. You want me to because money is tight and money runs everything and kids are fucking expensive as hell. If I make enough money to, well, shit. Do you love me because of what I can do or do you love me for me? I will never fucking know and that absolutely bothers me.